Photoshop just introduced one of the most significant features in the program's history. The ability to upscale just about any image, regardless of how small, to 16 megapixels. In other words, for the first time ever, Photoshop can now invent resolution. I'm starting with a stock photo from the Dreamstime Image Library. Link in the description. It is not very big. You can see up here in the title tab, it reads 100%. That means if I zoom out here a little bit, these are all the pixels we got, which is a little deceptive because this image actually started off as a CR2 file, so it was a raw photograph, which I then opened as a smart object here inside Photoshop. It's actually a vertical image, so it contains a fair number of pixels. It's just that I want them to be horizontal instead of vertical, and which means I need to upsample. And one way to do that is to go to the image menu and choose the image size command. However, that's going to apply standard old-fashioned interpolation. So it's just going to take the existing pixels and average between them. If you want to involve AI, you want to go with this guy right here, generative upscale. At which point you have three options. 2x, 3x, 4x. This could change in the future. Obviously, I want to go as far as I can. So I'm going to choose 4x. However, that's a problem. The output is now going to be too large. The width or the height exceeds 4,096 pixels. That's very important. Either one, if either one of them exceeds that value, then it's not going to work. So it invites you to try a smaller scale or reduce the image size. So you could open the image in the image size dialog box and then downsample it, which makes no sense whatsoever. That would be an insane thing to do. Absolute folly, because why would you downsample before you then turn around and upsample? Who would do such a thing, Adobe? So cancel out your better option. And this is what it should have offered you is to go to the image menu and choose the canvas size command because that way you can crop. And as long as you have layers available to you, in other words, there's nothing that reads background here inside the layers panel, then you can crop non-destructively. So make sure width and height are set to pixels and relative is turned off and then change the width value. Might as well start there with a two, 4,000 96 divided by four because we want to increase it by four times by 4x right and so that way you you can let photoshop do the math for you and turns out that is 1024 so as long as you start off with 1024 for both values by the way then you can upscale to 4x which is what we want and by the way if you're finding this to be terribly helpful information which i'm hoping it is then won't you take a moment to subscribe and turn on notifications in any event i'm going to lock down the top anchor point here so that I'm cropping away the bottom and left and right pixels. This is a misleading alert message. We're not really going to harm the image at all. So just go ahead and click proceed. And even though the framing has changed, we still have all of the original image available to us. And this is great because what it means is you can start with an enormous image if you want to. You just need to make sure the frame is 1024 by 1024 pixels. Then go up to the image menu and choose generative upscale once again. Change the scale to 4x. No problems this time. It's going to, the new dimensions are going to be 4096 by 4096 pixels. Click OK. And what's wonderful about this is it's upscaling to a new document. So it's not harming your original image at all. In fact, it's going to create a kind of a comparative scenario for you as we're seeing right here. And so for some reason, it gives you a layer mask. You don't need that. So you can get rid of it if you want to. And then we're seeing the upscale version of the image at 100%, by the way. It may look, well, actually, I'm zoomed in a little too far. It may look a little bit soft, but compare that to what would have happened if you had upsampled it using standard by cubic interpolation in case you're familiar with what that is. It's the best way to go, generally speaking, with the exception of preserved details. I could get lost in the weeds, not gonna. That's just showing you what we're seeing here is standard upscaling. If you then turn on the 4X upscale layer, you're going to see much sharper looking results and smoother results as well. Now it may add things, 
which is interesting. I want you to see before, she doesn't really have any moles. She's got some, you know, some general skin stuff going on here and there. However, if I turn on this layer, she's got a kind of mole right here and a more distinct mole at this location. And so you may find because you are working with AI that you end up adding some arbitrary details. All right, now for another take on things. This one I captured of this massive school of squid. There were like three dozen of them. However, my take on it is pretty unremarkable. The squid are very far away and we've got all kinds of backscatter, this dust in the water. So I copied this central guy to its own image. And as you can see, if I go to the image menu and choose canvas size, no value, neither value that is, exceeds 1024 pixels. So if you want to upscale by 4x, that is your magic maximum number right there. I'll go ahead and cancel out. Now your image can contain multiple layers. If I zoom in here, you can see, if I turn these guys off, that there was a bunch of kind of garbage in the water that I have removed, except I haven't done a brilliant job, quite frankly. There it is. It looks a lot better now. And then I went ahead and blurred the general background. And so things are looking pretty smooth, but we have very, very few pixels. And if I were to go to the image menu and choose the image size command, you can see that at a resolution of 267, which is a great resolution to work at, but standard res, that the width is less than four inches. So it's a very dinky image indeed. Whereas if I go up to the image menu and choose generative upscale, once again, I want 4X. Click upscale and you can see that I'm going to upscale, upsample, if you will, to a new document with a bunch of layers, not a problem. And now we're seeing basically a before and after. So you can get rid of that layer mask once again. It's not doing you any good. And then I can turn off the upscaled version of the image. This is how things would look if I relied on standard by cubic interpolation available to me from the image size dialog box. I'll go ahead and zoom out. This is a little more representative but it's pretty soft whereas now the image is sharper hey real quick in addition to generative upscale photoshop offers another ai enabled imaging function called harmonize on its face it takes the foreground image and auto blends it with a new background like some kind of enhancement to the match color command but as we see here that would be lame, which is why Harmonize does so much more, matching tone, shadows, reflections, and ultimately returning the usual three Firefly-created variations. To learn all about it, join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. And now, back to the wonders of generative upscale. Now, it's not noiseless, but neither is the creature. A lot of this sort of detail that we're seeing is endemic to this particular squid. And now if I were to go up to the image menu and choose the image size command, you can see that at that same resolution, it now measures more than 15 inches wide, which satisfies my needs quite nicely. All right, now for a third scenario, and this one has to be my favorite. As you may be aware, Adobe has recently upgraded Firefly. So firefly.adobe.com, specifically the text to image module not only supports new versions of Firefly itself, so we've got Firefly 4 and Firefly 4 Ultra, but it also supports non-Adobe models such as OpenAI's GPT and Google's Imagine, both of which typically do a better job of following your instructions. Now, the big advantage to Firefly is that it returns four megapixel images, whereas the others only give you a single megapixel. But at the risk of trying your patience a little bit, check out this prompt. I, I just want you to see, this is what Firefly image 
uh, for Ultra has come up with. I'm asking for the back of the hands, and I'm seeing the palms. I'm asking for index finger and pinky extended. That's not what I'm getting, obviously. I want the thumbs outstretched fine, but I want them facing inward. So not quite what I wanted. So, of course, I just monkeyed with the aspect ratio, and I tried this exact same prompt again scouts honor and it came up with this and this is the kind of stuff that firefly does all the time yes it gives you higher resolution imagery but it doesn't obey your instructions worth beans i'm glad we're in zion that's nice but you can see that this is by the way google's imagine it's doing a better job not always perfect in this case these are arms from two different people because the thumbs are facing the wrong directions but generally speaking it's exactly what i'm looking for the thing is of course we have low resolution results so here in photoshop if i go up to the image menu and choose image size you can see that i'm looking at an image that's 1408 pixels wide by 768 pixels tall so that's that's about a megapixel, by the way. And at a standard print resolution of 267, we've got an image that's just more than five inches wide, which is not what I want. However, it does invite me to try out generative upscale, so that's good. Unfortunately, the image is a little bit too wide to go 4X. So what I'm gonna do is crop this image non-destructively by going up to the image menu and choosing canvas size, and I'll just go ahead and dial in that value for 96 divided by 4 once again which gives you 1024 pixels wide I'm gonna let it crop I may get an alert message I can safely ignore that because this is a non-destructive crop I assure you however if I zoom in you can tell that this is very little we have very little in the way of resolution we have big chunky pixels and so i'll just go ahead and follow it up by choosing generative upscale i'll ask for 4x now it's going to work click upscale and as you can see Photoshop is going to return the image to a new document, so it's not going to harm the original. Here are the dimensions that I will receive. I'm a little bit too far zoomed in, but let's say I sort of centered the zoom a little bit so we can see what's going on. There's some noise, and we've got this layer mask, which just bugs the heck out of me personally. However, it's so much better than what we would have gotten if I had just upsampled using the standard bicubic interpolation which was the way we used to work before this new command came along and now here's what we get with the assistance by the way of firefly so photoshop is communicating with firefly you do need a live internet connection and we get so much better detail down to check out that skin texture so in other words we end up with what is effectively the best of both worlds how shockingly awesome is that or does a little bit of google plus a whole lot of adobe spell the end of the world as we know it comment below and then subscribe and turn on notifications so you know what crazy things are coming down the pike in the future for a look at photoshop's other earth shattering adventure in the ai harmonize join me at patreon.com slash deke now and then go to deke.com and sign up for my newsletter i'm deke mcclelland this is deke now